Hi guys and welcome back to another tutorial. My name's Kimberly from Kimberly Russell Art. I'm an animal artist based in Melbourne, Australia and I've been drawing for about 17 years. I do animal commissions and create works for people all around the world. Most people know me for my pastel works but I work across other mediums such as coloured pencils, acrylic oil and I even actually do a bit of sculpting. I recently launched a Patreon channel where people can gain access to my online tutorial library where I provide the information I've spent 17 years learning and converted it into easy to follow, full length voice instructed videos. You can follow along with these step by step and learn to draw realistic animals too. The tutorials are designed to be followed at your own pace, rewound and pause when you need. I tell you exactly what I'm using and how I use it as I work along. I provide free line art for those who want to trace or skip ahead. I offer high quality copyright free reference images. I provide a list of materials and you can even access a private Facebook group where you can share your current um, works in progress or your completed works and get support from your fellow peers in, within the Patreon group. I have different tier options to suit a broad range of artists from novice artists or someone wanting to brush up on their skills all the way to artists who are ready to tackle full length tutorials where you learn to draw a whole portrait just like this puff one we're going to work on today. If you're keen to join my Patreon account you can access the link in my description box or from any of my social media accounts which are also linked in the description below. Alternatively, head straight over to the Patreon site directly and search for Kimberly Russell Art. Tiers start as low as two cups of coffee a month and there's no lock-in contracts and you can switch up or upgrade your subscription at any time. If you don't do so already, I'd really appreciate if you could like, follow and subscribe. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram and Facebook to keep up to date with my work in progress, time lapses, finished pieces and just some fun videos. There's also a link in the description below to my website if you uh, want to purchase a print, um, an original or inquire about a commission. Now that we have that over, let's get into this puffin tutorial. So today for this tutorial, we're going to be using the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper in the color Sienna. Uh, it's not necessary to use the color Sienna. I've just chose this color because I've got an excess of it and I don't really use it very often. Um, I'm going to be using the pan pastels. So if you haven't seen these before, this is by a company called Pan Pastel and they're just essentially pow uh, pastels compressed into dishes and we access it and then put it on. It's um, really great for backgrounds and really good for um, laying a base color. Um, to work with our pastels, uh, our pan pastels, we also have those little sponges and a applicator tool. Um, you can also get little sponges like these ones. In regards to the pencil brands that we're going to use, so the pastel pencils, In regards to the pastel pencils we're going to use today, I'm going to be working with four different brands. So we've got the Derwent Pastels, the Stibilo Carbothellos, the Carandash Pastel Pencils, and then also the Faber-Castell Pit Pastels. So um, I've got the full sets of all of these brands um, and I will just pick certain ones to work with uh, as we work along. The other thing I am going to use some other tools I have with me is my blending stumps. These are really great. Um, I love these and my electric eraser just in case I make some mistakes or if I want to dull out these under or these line art that I've put on there. Um, so you can see that I've already traced out my outline and we have a reference image of the puffin just up here in this right hand corner. Now <clears throat> if you um, go into the description you can also gain access and download this reference photo, a high quality large version of it, um, as well as a free liner if you want to trace your outline and you don't want to freehand it or draw it yourself. And I have linked a, a materials list as well, so a list of all the full materials and colours that I use to complete this portrait. So uh, just head on into the description and you can click on those and download those so that you can have a go at this picture as well. Now before anyone asks me, this thing on my finger is a silicon pad. Um, I just, I've been getting a lot of pain and, and sort of callous fingers from holding my pencil. So it's just there to help as the pencil rests on my finger. Um, it just looks a bit yucky because it's picked up all the fluff off my jumper. Um, but I assure you it is clean <laughs> and it's not a band-aid and it is literally just a removable 
um, silicone thing to protect my finger um, and just help with discomfort because when you draw for a living, um, yeah, you tend to get some pretty epic calluses and sore hands. Um, but yes, because we're going to be doing a background on this image today, um, I want to start sort of mapping in the background, at least on the edge of my piece of work. And the reason why is because um, it can become really difficult to <coughs> apply a background after we've done the main focal point of the picture. And the reason is because the edges start to get quite blurred. Um, also, with my outline, I just want to let you guys know that some of them areas are really dark and some I've tried to erase out a little bit. And the reason why is that these outlines will poke through a light color. So whites, light yellows, all that sort of stuff. It will poke through um, because they apply quite transparent. Um, so in those areas, I've tried to erase the lines out so that you can't see it through the pigment. In the areas it's a bit darker, it's where the animal's black and I'm not really too concerned. So. Um, I am going to start with applying a bit of my background. So <clears throat> I'm going to take a pan pastel in the color Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to start to apply that around the edge. Now I'll let you guys know that obviously the colors are never going to be identical to what's in the image, but we want to we want to try and create somewhat of a resemblance of those colors, if that makes sense. So I pick colors that I can see are visually closest to what I'm trying to replicate. Um, you can only usually tell these things when the images are side by side, but if you're just looking at them uh, as, a, as a single thing, you, you often can't tell. Now, I'm applying a bit of a darker tone around this bottom hand side and this upper corner. So you can see in the reference image, there's a lot more of like a yellowy gray around here. And then it's quite dark as we get over to this side of his little beak. So I'm just gonna take my pan pastels and kind of work along the edge. You have to be careful not to um, cross over your line or where your line is so that you avoid getting the pigment in that area. Now here at the background we can see that that's where it transitions into rock that's very blurred out. Um, so I'm not going to keep bringing that pigment down. I'm just going to work around. And remember we always start with thin layers and then work our way up by building our pigment as we go. So we can see here as I've applied that, it's still very thin. Um, you can still see the orange really poking through, but that will get better the more pigment that we lay down. I'm gonna take my pan pastel in the color turquoise shade. So it's a nice little green color. I'm just gonna go in with the same sponge cause they're um, not too much of a different pigment. And then I am gonna kind of work in a little bit with this. Now, if you haven't used pastel matte paper before, it's a cellulose, I believe, based paper. So it's got a bit of a tooth on it, um, but it is still really fine compared to, um, compared to a lot of other brands like you can't you can see the pigment a little bit and the tooth a little bit but not not a whole bunch now I'm actually going to start to lay this turquoise across this middle section because we're going to go over it with gray or like a light color you can see here that the paper's a little bit scratched also I apologize if I'm going a bit off screen I'm using a 50 mil camera lens and it's I can't get it any further away um, and I don't want to move the camera just to show you the top of this um, artwork when it's not relevant really like it's it's literally just color like it's not got any detail in it it's just me blending these pastel or these pan pastels out a little bit so I'm going to go in a little bit heavier with this turquoise 
and work my way around. So remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can come back and finish the background a bit later, um, but we just want to kind of start to lay the base pigment so that when I'm doing the bird, uh, I'm not gonna, like the main key thing is that we, we cover up the, like, this edge here where there might be some fur. So I've now come in with my neutral gray tint. If I didn't show you, you literally just dip it in. You can tap it off if you want and then start to blend that in. Now, if you don't have these little sponges, well, they're just essentially their makeup sponges, right? They, they're like the little tips that you get in the makeup kit. Um, so you could probably just buy them from a cheap, like a like a, the reject shop or two dollar shop or something like that and then um or alternatively that like they don't work as well but your good old cotton buds um you can use those same as a blending stump right if you don't have any blending stumps you can use these as an alternative they're obviously never going to be as good but you know artist materials are expensive and sometimes we just have to do stuff on a budget so you can see how much just applying that gray on top has really started to turn this pigment quite opaque and more in line with what that actual reference photo looks like. Now, don't be too stressed if you cross over the line a little bit, if the pigment is really um, thinned out. Okay. Again, I'm sorry I'm out of frame. I'm just trying to blend that. Out a little bit. And we're gonna work my way around. It's almost like a I can never pronounce this word, boca, boca. Um very, very like there's just high depth of field, basically. So we can really sort of see that in the background, which is good. And I'm just using circular motions with my um with my applicator again because it's the background and it's not a detailed background it's very blurred out because of the depth of field I'm not too worried about um precision and having uh, like being really um careful with my application of the color of course when I'm trying to film a tutorial there's someone with a trailer making a lot of noise outside. This always happens. So I'm sorry if you can hear that in the background. Um, it seems to be the way of the world with me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take that gray and very, 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 really thin, thinly apply that on this left-hand side. Um, I just wanna kind of make it a bit more, uh, yeah, opaque basically. So one thing I do want to say to you guys is I totally get that not everybody has pan pastels. Um, that is just use regular pastels. Either use um, the sticks, so like the old school, like just chunks of pure pastel, you can do that. Or just use your pencils. It's just more time consuming. Um, that's why I am not using my pencils because this is just a faster way and it saves me pigment and wasting my um, the pencils I need for the detail. So I can see in this left hand corner of the image, like just up here, it's quite dark. So I'm actually gonna take some raw umber X dot dark in my pan pastels. On camera, it probably looks almost a little bit black, but it's not. Um, so I'm just gonna take a bit of that. I'm gonna tap it off and, ooh, that's super dark. I'm just gonna start to work that in to the background. And again, just using a circular motions. And working along that border and not going too far down because remember that beak is where the white starts to kind of transition. So where we're applying this dark pigment, we can really see the tooth of the paper starting to poke through where it's definitely not as visible 
um, with our uh, lighter colours. Working around, I might come back in with my um, Payne's Grey and start to kind of go over that a little bit. Might need a darker grey. I don't like seeing the tooth. <laughs> this is the issue. Okay. So I'm just gently blending that in. Now, if you want to create a softer look, just apply less pressure with your tool. You can always try blend a little bit with your finger. Um, I don't love to do that because pastels are very drying uh, and I just don't like the feeling so I, I try not to use that. I usually will use a blending stump. Um, but I might come back in with that lighter grey. I really wish I had like a, maybe I've got a medium grey, let's have a look. Let's try the neutral grey. Probably doesn't look much darker on camera but I think it is. Yeah, it's more of a warm grey. Again, this background's not the most important part of the image, but it is like you can just work with whatever colours if you, as I said, if you don't have these pan pastels, whatever colours you have that are closest will be fine. Yeah, okay, so this grey is helping to eliminate a bit of that tooth which I don't like, which is good. Again, just working my way around. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're left or right-handed, you want to avoid smudging your work um, with your hand as you work. So you gotta be, this is not usually such an issue when you don't apply a background, but when you pop a background in, um, you need to think about that. I don't want to be holding my hand over the background as I work because I'm going to um, cause problems, essentially. Let's take our blending stump and just, yeah. So in circular motions with my blending stump, I'm just going to buff out that edge a little bit. Again, I'm not too worried going in with my finger now. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to be perfect with the background is what I'm trying to say. For the time being, this will probably do and then we can go in and touch it up later. Not, might need a little bit more of that teal. So let's pop these pan pastels out of the way. Okay, so when I'm drawing my portraits, I always like to start with the eye and then I work my way out because I'm right-handed. I work my way out to the left and then kind of down and across. So I want to start with his eye because I find that helps me ground me a little bit. So I'm going to take my black. He's got a pretty simple eye because he's little. Um, so I'm going to just start to lightly map in my pupil, uh, just using tiny little circular motions with almost no pressure. And then I am going to take my, uh, so I should just preface that's a black color. So the 750 in the Carbothellos. I'm going to take my Faber Castell Pit Pastel in the color one, uh, 1122181. So it's like a slate gray. And I'm just gonna, again, lightly in circular motions, start to apply that pigment. I'm gonna grab a very little blending stump. Uh, this one will do. And I'm going to just gently push that pigment in to the tooth of the paper with my blending stump again just lightly touching the paper and applying pressure in a circular motion come back in with our black but oh sorry i basically erased that 
So we'll come back in and reapply the black. Now we can see on the border of his eye to the right, he's got a little bit of a um, pinky color. So I'm going to apply that in with the Faber, sorry, the Carbothello 642. It's like a dusty pink. So I'm going to start to kind of apply that in a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with one of my core pencils, the um, Violet Grey by Caran Dash. So working my way around the outer edge of the, of the iris and then just gently applying less pressure as I work in the middle. So I'm drawing almost like a semicircle and then dragging that back towards the pupil. I'm going to come back in with our black. I'm going to start to border the eye. So we're going around the outer edge of the eye with the black. And then we come on the inner portion of where that pink is that we applied and working around. So remember that we're using pastels so we can apply lots and lots of layers. I am actually going to come in with a warm grey, the 704 by Stabilo. And I'm going to start to do a few little dots and light dashes in towards the pupil. And I didn't mention this before, but this is the Credicolor Blackest or the Black Chalk. So it's a 46012. It's the blackest black that you can get. I highly recommend it. And I am just going to go over the pupil with this to really make it pop. Now I can come back in with my <coughs> Carbothello and I'm going to, there's a shadow on the top portion of the eye, so I'm just going to map that in really, really lightly, always applying very light pressure as I work. Now we can see also has a little um, highlight in his upper eye. So I just also, I didn't say this, but I have my reference photo blown up really large on my computer. So although there's a tiny little reference photo in this right hand side here, um, to, I've got a split screen on my computer and I've blown the reference image up really, really big. So I can just see all that detail in his little eye. So I would recommend definitely doing that if you, um, uh, working on any drawings. Okay, let's grab our light, ooh, our warm grey, and just at the top of that eye, we're going to add in that little half square of where he has a bit of highlight. Also, if you hear me blowing, I do that often when I'm drawing. Um, I'm blowing away the pastel pigment. Um, it's just a really bad habit. It's not to say that you, I don't think that you should do that. It's just a very bad habit that I've picked up over time. Okay. Now his outer eyeball is quite a bright or like a, a bright red. I would love to use this pan pastel. It's not picking up on the camera. It is like fluorescent, um, ready orange color. This is the permanent red. We're going to use that on his beak as a base, but probably the closest I've got to that is the Stabilo 310, um, the Carbothello Stabilo 310. So I'm just going to use that to outline the outer edge of his little eye. Coming down. I might actually zoom in. All right, I've come in a little bit closer. I'm sorry it's not super, super close, but um, it's a bit difficult. Also, if the, if the camera gets moved, it's because I've bumped it with my head. Um, it's right above me. <laughs> so I'm coming back in with that red, um, and I'm just going to start to work in this outer eyelid a little bit. So just very, very, very gently and lightly mapping that in. And then it kind of comes up around the top. We can see at the top, um, it's already, it kind of it gets dulled out quite a lot. And then it comes 
over the top of his eye. So I'm going to just follow that line, come around the border a little bit, and then down into a little peak at the bottom because that's what his it does in his reference, and then come up. So this, talking about trying not to smudge your artwork, this is what I mean. My hand is resting on that background just here. And ideally we don't want that because we're gonna transfer that pigment over onto your artwork and we wanna avoid that situation. So um, this is a time where I would say that you should put down like a piece of um, paper to stop your hand touching that. But because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna try my best to avoid the situation. All right, um, we can also see, so in this red that we've just popped in, there's a bit of orange in there. So I'm gonna take my Fast Orange by Karen Dash or like a, just a bright orange color. And I'm gonna start to kind of try and border the bottom of this eye. It's very small details, so you gotta be careful. I'm just being very, very light. And then it comes up around on this inner corner a little bit. And then a tiny bit at the top. And then a little bit up here as well. In around. So his little eye is quite dark. There's sections that are very dark. So I don't know if this is maybe a bit too purple, this. Let's have a look. This is actually it's not too bad. Um, let's take a burgundy color or like yeah, deep dark kind of red. I'm gonna use the one from Derwent. And I am going to, first of all, try and border this inner eyelid where he had his little pink bit around his eye that I talked about and just define the outer edge. And then I'm gonna come under the bottom of this red that I've just popped in and transition it out a little bit and then around. So I'm just kind of basically bordering the outside of this red that we've just done. Just lightly. Now you can blend it in a little bit with the bright red. Just use tiny little circular motions and then really, really, really gentle pressure. Pastel does not require much pressure at all to apply pigment. Um, so always work, I, I'm hardly touching the paper. Always work lighter because once you fill that tooth, you can't unfill it really. Like you can try and erase a little bit, but it's probably not going to work. So I might come back in with my bright orange, the 310, and just kind of go over a little bit of the edge because I lost a bit of that bright red pigment. I'm just gonna try and blend that in. It's constant back and forth with our layering. Come back in with my orange again. It's actually almost like a, a light peach under his eye. I probably should maybe come back in with a bit more of a lemony yellow. Let's try the light flesh. Oh, not quite, but it'll do. So I've come back in with more of a lighter color. And then I just need to fix up. This is the issue with little details is it's very hard to stay in your lane, so to speak. Uh, Okay, I might take my blackest black and again, very, 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 very lightly just try and reborder that eyeball to give it back some of that definition. And now we can kind of see how the eyeball, when you look at it up close, it kind of almost looks like the iris curves in. So when we've kind of got that effect by doing little curves lines as we work back towards the pupil with our lighter colors. Um, you can even border the edge a little bit more with a purple because that is just what you see in the image. And right in the pinky area that we did, 
you can lighten that up with like a flesh color or a bit of a well that's not the color I wanted yeah like a flesh anything that's like a super pale pinky flesh color from any of the brands I'm going to use the 681 by Stabilo and just a few tiny little dots in the area that's pink whereas like iris meets the white of his eye basically now he's got like a bluey black under here and then at the top so I'm probably gonna come in with the Carnage Payne's Grey and I'm going to just start to lightly fill in this area again always working with very light pressure and then under the eye very gentle pressure just little circles working my way around now I can see at this bottom section it kind of comes up and under and pokes out and they grab my blending stump and I am going to just lightly in circular motions blend in that paint gray or your blue whichever color you manage to use and I am going to take my um, I might take my 181 by Faber-Castell, so the slate grey, and start to border the edge of this red again. Again, working in light circular motions and then, excuse me, dragging the pigment out and down as we go along. And same, just on the inner border of where the red and the blue meet. It's almost in a U shape. And I'm gonna come in with some black. Really, really gently on this edge. Same thing, almost no pressure. Light little circles. I'm just blowing that pigment away as I work because it's habit. <laughs> and work our way up. If only I could show you pressure, but it's like impossible. <laughs> you can't visually see pressure, but basically I'm hardly touching it at all. So coming along this bottom border, again, right up under that, uh, eyelid I suppose you would call it the eyelid line and working out in tiny little circular motions and then we can drag that into the inner corner of that red just a little bit I have a terrible feeling that somebody is going to start doing some kind of construction right outside as I am filming this I can see a man with a ute and it's very concerning to me. Okay, I'm gonna take my slate gray again, the 181, and I'm just actually gonna border the bottom of this eye, because I can see that there is a darker patch as that kind of starts to meet with the fur. And then if you have the credit color, you can again go on right at the bottom corner. And just, oh, I'm pretty sure it's my lawnmower man. Ugh. I'm gonna grab a lighter gray color, so a 724 by Stabilo. And just in this upper corner of this eye, I don't know what you would call this part, Kind of like his eyebrow I suppose. I'm just gonna very gently buff that in because it gets quite light right at the top at the peak and then I'm just gonna add in a few little dashes and lines in this bottom section. We can take our black and again just this outer line it actually comes up and kind of meets over the top. So I'm 
very, 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 very lightly drawing that in. And then we can take our burgundy and just fatten out this bit here because it's kind of lost its definition. Oops, I've gone a little bit too wide. So just pop that in. And then what we can do is grab our electric eraser if we need to and just, oop, I'm making an absolute mess of this. Sorry, let's grab our electric eraser. No, let's grab our burgundy, go back in. We're gonna grab our black, touch up that we just messed up. And there we go. Sometimes, unfortunately, when we're working on things like this, stuff can go wrong, but that's the key thing is to learn how to like amend the mistakes that we make. It's usually possible. So I'm just coming back in with my red again and re-mapping in some of these details that I lost. And I'm gonna take my orange and again, just re-map in a couple of small details that I have started to lose as I've worked along. All right, I'm gonna grab a white. It doesn't really matter what brand. I'm going to use the Carandash white, so the Azurite, Az Azurite white, um, and I'm going to start to, so right up here on his upper portion of his um, like eyebrow, I'm just going to start to lightly, lightly map in that white portion. So very, very gentle, just working it in there because he's going to then transition into his dark color so i just kind of want to make sure that i don't lose this detail so i'm going to put this in nice and early and again just build build on your color so start light and apply more pressure as you work He's also got a tiny little line on the outer edge of that. So I'm going to take my 181 by Stabilo, that, sorry, by Faber-Castell. So the, um, that's the slatish kind of gray and just really lightly pop that very thin line in. And then I can, again, border that on the inner portion of this white line, very light. and sort of slowly start to map in his little head. So if we look at the reference photo up nice and close, it's more of a blue hue, transitions into like a warm gray, and then kind of has multiple grays and, and warm black kind of color through here. I am actually going to take one of these tiny little makeup blenders. I'm gonna take my permanent red from my pan pastel. I'm gonna put some pigment on this guy. Try and not make too much of a mess. Tap that off. And then I'm gonna start to just really lightly lay a base down of where the red in the beak is. So I'm taking a lot of care to try not go outside the lines. It is a lot harder when you're using little tools like this. So just coming in and remember, we don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too quickly, so we just want to apply a very, very thin, thin coat. So I can see in this little dip where I've got it mapped out, and then in between. So we're kind of filling it in, leaving a gap, filling it in, leaving a gap. And then he's got a tiny bit. So he's got his bl uh, blackish color, and then he's got a yellow bit just here. So the next one over is where we want to do our red. And then he has another gap. And then the next one over is where we want to again start to apply 
a little bit of the red. Now, if you're using pencils, this is all going to take a tiny bit longer. And I'm just gonna run that red very gently across the bottom of his beak. And go over these areas just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. I'm gonna grab a dark carmine, so I'm very dark burgundy color from the Car Caran d'Ache pastel pencil range. And I can see here, so again, he's got his slate section, his yellow and orange part. And just as that yellow and orange part, it kind of transitions as a very thin line of where this transitions into like a deep burgundy dark color as it follows his beak up. So I'm, I'm just gently, gently starting to kind of apply that pigment. Again, always working light so that I can build my layers. Um, and then we skip over to this bare line here and we're gonna do the same thing on the inner portion, just lightly map that in and then skip again and do the same thing again on this blank one, very gentle. And then right down at the tip of his little beak, it's quite dark. So just gently mapping that in. And following. I'm just gonna go and draw just where his beak meets in the middle. I'm just gonna really lightly go over that with this burnt carmine, just up to this middle portion. I'm going to take my, I'm actually going to take my like fluorescent -y red that we just used, so the 310 that we used around the eye, and I'm going to start to work in with a bit more precision this very bright beak of his. I need to sharpen my eraser, my, my sharpen my eraser, sharpen my pencil. So just taking that pencil and again, lightly working in some of that pigment. You will see my finger is really far back on the barrel. And the reason why it is like that is because it allows me to be really light with my pressure. Just working around. Coming down, trying to blend that purple, that deep color in a little bit better. So using circular motions and then kind of crossing the pigments across each other as if I want to blend them. And then same thing, lightly, lightly going over those burgundies that we've just applied. And down the bottom, just gentle. Now we can see it's almost like a pinky salmon color running along this top border. I need to find a good color to do that in. Hmm. We might actually want to use, hmm. let's try this. It's not too bad. Let's use the saffron in the Caran d'Ache, or you could use it in the Derwent. And we're just gonna slowly drag down right on the edge of that beak. And then just the tip. And I, again, you can see I'm almost applying like no pressure. Just work my way up. And then this little top part of his beak actually is quite orange. So I'm dulling that red out. And then I'm going to grab a very vibrant, bright orange from, hmm, let's do, let's take it from the Stabilo Carbothellos and just really pop that bright orange at the top. 
and then maybe pop in a bit of the 305 which is on camera it probably looks really similar to the red that I was using but it's more orange based so I'm going to use this one by Stabilo and again just work that in a little bit keep transitioning back and forth if you need to I can see a little bit of my outline poking through and it's frustrating me okay now we kind of want a yellowy peachy color possibly so we'll take the light flesh 10% and just start to fill in this upper part of his little nose which is um, very yellow or his nose his beak I mean his little beak and I want to grab my eraser and I want to try and really get rid of this line here I'm coming back in with that lighter color and just working again my fingers really far back on the barrel and I'm just working in my little circular motions gently applying the pigment excuse the lawnmower man in the background but I'm just going to take this grayish black from Karen Dash and then I am going to start to border the edge of this beak a little bit and just because it's a bit messy so I want to just define the outline of that again and I might come back over with the um, Payne's Grey 50% and buff up And then come in with a little bit of our uh, turquoise shade and work along here. And then I can grab my blending stump and just try and blend out that edge a little bit better. I'm actually going to grab a super old blending stump and just work that in just blend it in just a little bit oh, I'm just gonna take my finger <laughs> I've given up guys I'm taking my finger and I'm just gonna use that to blend it in if you need we can take a little bit of that pigment on the blending stump I would say and just lightly that in so I'm taking a bit of the gray and just going over the top of that edge that I just did because it's probably a bit too vibrant this is a great example I love to show people that like even I as a professional right like I make mistakes and I have to fix things and it doesn't always look quite right we'll try to take a little tool and these little tools oh, that's better and blend it in just a bit better blow away the loose pigment and take my finger again try and buff it out Ugh. I haven't I don't know if it's the color paper that I've chosen but I'm having a rough time trying to get that to work okay now I can come back in with oh I've dropped a pan pastel and I've bumped my head into the camera I'm gonna take my bright orange my bright red so my 310 and just again try and redefine that beak and then come back in with my 052 I keep smacking my head into the camera guys I'm sorry and come right on that edge of the red beak and then we can grab our light flesh 10% and just as thin as possible try and trace a tiny tiny thin line on just the upper third 
of his little beak. And then very lightly drag that down. All right. So grabbing our light flesh, the 10% again, we're going to come back in and start working on this section. I'm sorry for being disjointed. I've had to keep stopping because of the lawn mowing man. Um, and then I'm kind of a bit like where at, where am I at? <laughs> so coming down, we can see it kind of peaks in a little bit here. Don't be afraid to cross over the colors just a little bit. So if we go light handed, we can see it's kind of blending together, it's blending itself. And then I'm going to come in and slowly start to fill in this part of the beak as it reaches his or where the fur starts. Again, still using that same color, just really lightly blending that in. Now, I probably actually should have taken my eraser looking at this and tried to dull down the line in the nose. So I'm just going to do that now. I would recommend you doing that before you fill it in. So coming back in again and just fill that pigment in. And then we can just very, 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 very gently drag in this upper corner. Now I can grab a blending stump, make sure it's nice and clean and just blend in that pigment just a little bit. Okay. Now I might take my warmish gray. So uh, the 704 by Stabilo. And I am, I've got the state of my hands. I am going to just slowly start to fill in these two sections of his little beak and then down a little bit. Just coming up again, always applying with very, very light pigment. And this area I'm, I'm very gently dragging up into the red. Now the reason we're doing this color is because he's almost got like, it almost looks kind of like a fish scale. Like it's, it's almost got like fluorescent parts of his beak. So I want to start with a darker color. We could even go in with a little bit of the, um, violet gray. And again, just lightly go over the top of that warmer gray on the outer edge. And then I'm going to come in with, hmm, which color? It needs a bit of yellow. So we might come in with a bit of, hmm. do I want to go light flesh 10% or light flesh 5%? it's probably the 10 percent so let's go so right this first peak here we're going to very 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 lightly and thinly draw a line on the outer edge like I'm almost not touching that paper I'm trying to make it as thin as possible you probably can only just see that and then I'm going to start to drag little lines in this gray not all the way up and I'm kind of doing a line missing a gap doing a line missing a gap but very 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 small and then I'm going to work my way up so again I'm going to start to kind of apply a little bit of a line on the inner side and then transition up the beak and then do sporadic little dashes in between. And then following the border again on this, so we've jumped over, I'm gonna follow the border again. We're gonna come down to the beak line and just do some little dashes. 
and then we are going to skip a little bit and then we're just going to do some little dash and dots in this lower portion. Giving it that like reflective look and then a little bit of the same thing just on the tip of this beak in the middle area, just in here. So we've done our little dashes just in this bottom bit here and then over here. We can grab our red and I can see that these little areas at the top are actually kind of blending into the red a bit more so I'm going to start to do that. I'm just going to drag that pigment down a little bit. Then we can just touch stuff up as we go. Okay, let's take our dark carmine purple, so the dark carmine from the um, Karen Dash, and then we're just going to add in a few little specks in here. And then again, deepen that very thin border on the inner side. And again on this side. And then over here. We can take our blending stump if we need, clean it off a little bit. Just try and blend those pigments. I'm going to grab some black and really start to try and deepen this line. And again, I am applying almost zero pressure. I'm just touching the paper. Just skipping over to the next one, just touching the paper and working about midway of the dark purple line that I just drew before. Remember, start light and check, cross check your image, see what you need to deepen in your values and which ones look okay. And then we're going to switch over to this inner beak section, which is quite dark. So it's got a line and then it kind of V's so there's a little V in the middle and then there's some lighter pigment which we're going to do in a minute and we are just deepening that section there with some black and then very gently and lightly dragging it up the beak. Grab our red, use it to kind of Go over the edge of that and blur it in, blend it in. The inner portion of that line, there's quite a bit of orange. So we might take this fast orange from Karen Dash or whatever bright orange you've got and just work your way in a little bit. Again, kind of crossing over the pigments. And then we can go in with more of a deep orange from the, so the 305 that looks like the red, but it's not. And again, really, really lightly, just mix it in with that, what did we call it? Fast orange. Now it doesn't go all the way up to the top of the beak. It kind of just goes about two thirds of the way up. We can come back in with our flesh or light flesh 10% and again start to just touch up those areas that we probably crossed over a little bit too much. Now I'm going to take my white and on this inner, so we've got our dark line and the next one over, we're going to just really, really lightly do a line on the inner portion. I want to get a nice sharp point. So just pop that in and then we're going to come over one and just on the bottom edge is the beak and then up like a little backwards L. We're going to add that white in there and then again really thinly and lightly just tracing a line as that beak kind of meets in the middle. 
Now we want to start to add in this highlighted bit here. So we're going to grab our um, Light Flash 5% and just do a little line up the middle. And then grab our white and just do some little dots in that line that we've just popped in. Wonderful. Now I kind of want a bit of a brown. Um, I might grab my 177, I think it is. Just bear with me, guys. I've just got to find it. Oh no, I lost it. 180. I found it, my 177, so the 1122-177 by Faber Castell. And right in this inner corner, just deepening that line and then switching over to the other side, there is a little line along the yellow edge. And it kind of works its way up really thin. So I've rotated my pencil upwards to a point to try and um, trace a really sharp line up this beak really, really gently. And uh, you can see how light and transparent I'm making that. I've made a little bit of a mistake, so I'm gonna grab my blending stump and just buff that out before I take my light flesh. I'm gonna grab the 5% this time and just water the edge of that. And coming up. Now we can grab our white. Now we're going to border the inner edge of this one here. And then the opposing side. Bring it up, outer edge. Remember we can do the term glazing, which is very lightly going over the top of something with another pigment or another color with not the intention to create and to overlay, but what's the word I'm looking for? Not to overlay, with the intention to uh, change the tone of something, but not, um, not, not completely, like it's just a really, really thin, um, transparent layer to alter something or brighten it or darken it or like uh, create a tone or a hue to it. Okay, now let's come in with our 181, the little slate, and I'm going to start to just work in a little bit of this beak. So just using my circular motions, working my way up. Now I'm getting very light and thin as I get up towards this upper portion. Now where this line is, there's a bit of a gap. We don't want to put any pigment in there. So just coming up, doo -doo -doo. filling it in. We're going to grab our blending stump, make sure it's nice and clean. And in circular motions, we're just going to start to buff in that base layer. So we've got something to work with and we're filling in the tooth. Yeah, I'm working down. I know why I always work on the gray pastel mat because the other colors just don't perform the same. You get used to, that's the one thing about pastel matte, whether you're using white or gray or this color, like they all work a little bit differently to each other. So it can make it difficult um, to transform your skills between the different colors. I'm gonna come in with my black now. And I'm gonna to start to add in some of these details. So um, where his beak actually meets in the middle, there's not really a lot of black. It's kind of bordered with yellow, but we kind of skip up maybe two mil 
and we can start to see there's a black line where his beak kind of comes across. It doesn't meet all the way at the edge, it comes across a bit. It scoops around in a little semicircle and then kind of transitions up. Has a little foot coming off it there. I'm just going to come in with the black and just buff that in. And again, really lightly, just kind of drag that pigment down, give it a bit of a blend. And then we're going to skip again, maybe like a mill, and just lightly, lightly buff in some darker pigment, very thin coat. Again, you'll notice I always move my fingers really far back on the barrel of a pencil when I want to ensure that I am not applying a lot of pressure. So again, coming up with a little bit of black, not right at the edge, I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. And then I'm gonna come in again, clean off that blending stump, and just touch the paper very lightly and buff it in. We can come back in with our slate and kind of work in the gap between the black. It's like the underneath section and starting to bring that pigment up a little bit. So some of these pastel mats I've noticed like really don't like to have like blending stumps used on them. This is one of them. <laughs> um, I'm just bordering the edge of this beak. Again, not all the way up. We can see that it kind of stops before the top. And coming up and over, we're gonna grab our violet gray. And as the beak starts to transition from slate into more of this lighter yellow. I'm gonna pop a bit of the paint of this um, violet gray in there and then work my way down on this inner edge. And then again, around on this inner edge, kind of work down. And then we can grab our light flesh 5% and I'm gonna to start to very lightly, very, very lightly buff in, in little circles, this upper portion where I can see in the photo, it's kind of transitioning from a light colored beak to the blacks and grays. Now I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna grab my, um grayish black from Caran d'Ache and I'm going to start to just pop in in again really light little circles little patches I'm not filling in the whole area I'm kind of doing a little patch but very lightly and then skipping a spot and then doing a little patch and come back in with my black and in between those Again, just kind of add a bit of more depth and value to that certain sections. Follow my little scoop that goes down. And then here in the middle of the beak, it's a bit darker. So I am just applying a bit more pigment there and again, work my way back up. And I'm gonna grab my 724. It's like a bluish gray from Faber-Castell. Right on this inner corner, we can see some little flecks. So I'm just gonna start to try and incorporate those in. Now, if my hand comes up and in way, it's because I'm trying to get a sharp point. So, I can see a few little dashes of like a blue through here. So I'm just starting to incorporate that. And then along here. And we might come in with quite a lighter blue gray. So we're gonna grab, I don't know if that's much lighter, but let's try a 722 from Stabilo. Oh yeah, 
it's fairly light. And again, just kind of go over top of a couple of those marks that we've just done. Remember, if you make them too bright, we can just take our blending stump and very, very, very lightly what we do, nice clean blending stump, we just tap or slightly drag that pigment really light. I'm going to grab my blackest black, so the credit color, and I am going to start to trace the line of this area that I popped in. I'm going to follow my little semicircle and come up the border of the beak like before. And then we can grab our very, very pale yellow, so the light flesh 5%. And on the upper portion of this black, really thin line, I'm just going to try and trace that beak. Again, super gentle pressure. I almost don't want the pigment to come down and come down. That's not the word I mean. I almost don't want the pigment to be laid or touching the paper. So I've just really, really thinly applied that. And then underneath that, I'm going to again, kind of come up into the middle of where my little C curve is and then work my way down and then follow the border of that beak. And then same thing on this inner, oh, I actually, I might grab my black. Right where this yellow and this violet meet here, I want to draw a very thin line with black. Only about, yeah, midway up. This is where we put our little brown before, so we can come back in with the brown and just go over the top if you want. Then I'm going to come back in with my light flesh 5%. And at the bottom of that line, so the inner side, I'm going to, again, like midway of this bottom curve, I'm just going to start and then lightly try and follow that along to give the highlight to the edge. There. A little highlight, little spot of highlight just there. We'll pop that in. A little spot of highlight just there. And pop that in. So we're just constantly rechecking over our reference photo and seeing where we need to increase the detail or add a little bit more pigment. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going in and um, kind of adding in a little bit more where I need to. Now it's almost like a bit grey in this upper beak, so I'm going to grab my warm grey from Stabilo, so that is the 704. And I'm just going to go really lightly over the top of this area. But in my, I think, doing circular motions, but I'm also dragging the pigment at the same time. Then I can come back in with my white and really border that inner line and make it pop a bit more. So I'm sorry my hand's in the way. Just watering that line and then the other side. Water that line. Make it, make it stand out a little bit more. Alternatively, you can grab your um your, your Faber Castell Pit Pastel White, which is very vibrant, and same thing. Just try and highlight that edge. Okay, now let's go in with a little bit of, we're going to take our 280 from Stabilo. It's more of an orangey brown, so just go with an orangey brown colour if you don't have this. And we're going to work on that inner section as the beak starts to transition to meet the um, feathers. So we're going to work our way up. We're going to grab our white. We're going to follow this inner line where it's dark. 
and just brighten that up with our white pencil. Same thing, go up and over the top. We want to, let's go in with, is that quite a ready brown? I might go in with a 625, or you can just use a brown, any dark brown that's kind of more of a warm base or like a red base. And we're going to start to, again, very thin and light pressure, just border the edge of this beak as it meets the feathers. And I'm being very, very, very gentle. And if you want to, you can start to kind of do some little diagonal strokes. And come down. Now this bottom portion, it starts to transition to quite an orangey color. So we'll get a very bright, vibrant 305. And pop that in there. And again, I just want to reiterate, if you don't have the colors that, I, that I'm telling you, just do your best to pick the color that's closest. So this is why it's really important to zoom into your reference photo and work out what colors you have that would most likely replicate what you're doing. Um, you can always blend colors together to achieve the look that you want. So don't forget that that's possible. So I'm gonna come back in with that brown again and then just start to kind of apply the pigment a bit more heavily in some little dots. So I do a little dot and I kind of skip a gap, do a little dot, because they're almost replicating where his little, um, feather follicles meet and up very good okay now this bottom section this front part of his little beak very very lightly i'm just going to apply the red that we've used for the rest of the beak like super thin and then grab my blending stump and just buff that in in circular motions. And I am going to erase this line as much as I can. I'm going to take our slate, so our um, 181, and we're going to slowly start to buff in again being more um, dense and heavy at the inner portion of the beak. And as we work our way out, it gets lighter. Leaving a gap between here and where the, fur, the, the feathers meet. Just doing my circles. Grab that blending stump. Oop, I dropped it, sorry. <laughs> and then slowly buffing out again little circles little motions not hard pressure now we want to apply our yellow so we'll take our flesh light flesh 10 percent and again just little circle motions i'm going to start to fill in this gap between the dark and the light color and it gets quite broad as it gets down here and then there's a little gap where it dips in and then comes up again cross over into this slate a little bit if you want very very light i'm going to grab my violet gray and again, as the slate transitions into the lighter colors, I'm very lightly circular motions applying some pigment. I've moved my hands to the back of the barrel so that I can definitely apply with a light hand. I'm gonna grab our black and under here, it loops underneath. You can see our black loops underneath and then kind of comes up and loops over. And then we follow the bottom of that beak. And as we 
get closer to the red, we get our line as thin as possible until it's basically non-existent. We can grab our black and in this upper border, very thin layer, just deepen the values in this inner bit. Follow the edge here. And grab your blending stump if you need, super light pressure, just again try and blend these pigments into each other. <sighs> now we've got quite a lot of orange on the edge, so I'm going to grab my 305 and I am going to start to just kind of blend the red into that flesh a little bit. And then we're going to actually switch over to an orange color. So the fast orange. And again, just going over that section, dragging it underneath a little bit. And then at the top, we bring it up and into the slate. And down here in this bottom corner, just very gently apply that in there. And then along the outer edge of that black, grab your red, so the 310. And again on this outer edge, we draw a little loop and then come down. And then we're going to grab our dark carmine and deepen that it's got quite a lot of shadow in there so on the inner side where it meets the fluff it's going to deepen those colors and then we can grab our slate if we want to and again just go along the edge a little bit to give it a bit more of a shadow grab the blending stump if you need and just buff out where you need to are always not touching that paper. I'm going to grab my blackest black and I'm going to border those edge again and then bring it down and then kind of in a little bit. Now I just want to fix this area here. There is um, it kind of comes out and over and I just want to demonstrate that so I'm just going to make a bit more of a bold there and then we're going to add a little bit more of an orangey warm tone on the edge of it. Touch up where you need to, I've just rubbed out some of that black so I'm just going to re go in there and fix up all those little mistakes that I've made. Just add, add those highlights back in. And then here it kind of skips a gap and then has a little highlight. So now we can see that there's some tiny little specks in here. It's actually probably a bit too light on this edge, so I need to deepen that a little bit. So I'm going to come back in with my slate, my 181, redistribute that a little bit and do like circles and then kind of skip a gap. So almost like he's got a little bit of a rash, if that makes sense, like little patches of dark pigment and then move it in. Now we want to grab our white and almost make like a little electricity bolt. So it, I'm doing a bit of a jaggedy motion and then some extra areas around that really lightly. It's kind of where his beak's peeling. And then here, I'm going to sweep under a little bit. 
add in a few dashes where you need and then grab your blending stump and just pat out some of these very bright areas we've just popped the pigment. So I'm lightly tapping the pastel. I'm not smudging it, I'm just tapping and moving around to pick up some of that pigment. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my pan pastel, so a raw umber tint, which is like a light, light grey, and I'm just going to start to um, put that in here where it needs to go. So I'm just dipping that in, tapping it off, and really lightly starting to kind of blend that into the background. Being really careful around this wing and the beak. You can see that the and the pigment's starting to rub off a little bit, so I'm kind of losing a little bit of that whiteness. Um, so I might need to switch it up and get a clean sponge. Just flip to this the tool upside down to try and get a little bit more. And I'm trying to blend that in a little bit with the upper pigment because. That's what it looks like in the um, image. It kind of blends together. Might take a little bit with my finger and just see how that works. Oh, it doesn't love it. <laughs> mm, it's okay. It doesn't really like to be applied with my finger apparently. That's good to know. So we'll take a bit more, work our way down. And keep going. You can see I've crossed over into where the wing is a little bit. Um, that's not the end of the world because the wing's dark, so. And I'm just dragging that pigment out. You don't want to press too hard when you're using pastel mat because um, what happens is it starts to rip up the sponges. <sighs> Again, dragging and circular motions. I'm applying the pigment probably a little bit heavier than I normally would. Um, again, that's just because this whole area is mainly light. Um, I might actually come in with a bit of white, like actual white. Uh, so it's called titanium white. And just brighten up some of these sections since we've really muddied it up. You can't see it too well on camera, um, but in real life, it's definitely a lot brighter as it gets to the body. Okay. And if you want to, you can grab your little finger and just buff it out or your blending stump. Just this pigment's not loving my Blending some, or my finger really. There we go. That'll do for now. Again, we can touch up this stuff a little bit later. Um, poor hands, just covered in gunk. So I'm gonna get back to this lower part of the beak. I'm gonna grab my warm gray that we initially went through from Stabilo. So that is the, um, 704 and I'm just going to start to lightly again kind of do sections where it's like I lay a little bit more pigment kind of skip a gap so that the red can poke through just little bits um right at the tip I'm going to grab my little slate right at the tip of this beak it's quite dark, so I'm just going to try and define that a little bit better. Um, 
it's kind of got lost in the background stuff that we've been doing. Okay, now we're going to come back in with our um, light flesh 10%. And we're just going to, again, like little little dots and lines, just kind of drag that down and out. Some with more pressure than others. And then we can switch over to our white. And same thing, but being more sparing, so not doing the whole bit, just kind of skipping gaps. Follow the bottom of that beak. And then... Here, there seems to be quite a white part, so I'm just going to apply my pigment a bit heavier handed. Then we have, I'm going to grab my black, so we have the orange meets the red, which then becomes really dark on this inner or this outer line. So I'm going to start to kind of pop that in, follow the red, and then same, just applying a little bit more pigment. We're going to grab our dark carmine and start to blend the black with the bright red. And then come back in with our actual bright red and just touch that up a little bit. It comes under. And then under here, it's quite vibrant. And if you need to, just pop a little bit of red through there. Now we do have a bright section, so we're gonna take our warm gray. I've somehow missed that, so it goes dark and then it's kind of light, which meets with this one. Grab our white, do the outer edge, so that outer line, and then just kind of dots and drag it down. I'm going to grab our red again, and then we're going to just touch up this part we kind of seem to have forgotten. We grab our dark carmine and just deepen some of these sections like just little patches where we can see in the beak that it's like a bit darker like this doesn't have to be perfect guys just remember that it's just about the basis of the drawing i'm going to grab my white again and just add in a few more highlights And then grab my black and just very lightly give the beaker border in some sections, not the whole thing. Just on a little black line. And you can almost grab your brown if you want. And again, go really lightly over the top of that black and blend it out. And then we're going to come up, go in with your pencil where you need to and just re-add in your highlights if you accidentally smear them out, which is what I constantly do. Awesome. All right, let's start to add in this wing. So we can actually see in our reference photo that his head is really in focus and then this lower portion, he's really, um, it's like very blurred and out of focus. So that's where our depth of field comes in and that's where we're gonna use our blending stumps. So I'm gonna take my black pencil and I'm just gonna lightly map in where his little wing is. Um, kind of goes down a little bit. And that's where his little white fur pokes back. So I'm going to go in with my black and be careful not to cross over his little beak. So I'm going to border that. 
and just in circle motions, start to fill in. See right here where I've laid that pigment and crossed over, I've filled the tooth of the paper and I can't lay my black properly, so I'm going to erase that. I don't want that happening. So I'm going to grab my black, go back in and start to lay that pigment down. And grab a blending stump. Um, I might grab a really old blending stump. I'm pretty sure I dropped it. Um, hmm. I don't know where it's gone. Okay. Let's just grab a blending stump. I'm going to start to push that black pigment in. Just trying to fill in the base of my wing the color the circular motions when you use a blending stump it is going to pull pigment out so that's when you can just see there let's blow it away i'm going to start to come in and apply my layers again so starting lightly applying more layers as we work just building that Color. It's a very unexciting part. Kind of pokes out a little bit more. Okay. We I know it looks weird, but we actually have a little bit of orange right in this corner. So we're going to pop that in super light and just really, really gently buff that out. I just stop using my fingers. I never use my fingers to smear pastel ever. Don't know why I've suddenly started doing that today. And again, no control. Okay. Just touching up the tip of his beak. It really annoys me when it's not sharp, like the detail's not sharp, so I'm just correcting that. And then I can grab my red if I need and just go in and touch that up. I want my beak to look really nice and clean. Okay. We come in with a bit of white again and just touch up where I pulled out some of the pigment with my finger. And I can even border that beak just a tiny bit with some white to make it sharp. And then I'll drag that pigment out. Clean my blending stump. And just lightly, lightly, lightly touch and buff the paper. Okay. Now, where there is on the edge of the wing, where we can see that it starts to be um, out of focus, we can see that there's a little bit of a blue edge or hue to his um, or tone to his wing. So I'm just going to take my Payne's Grey 50% and pop that in and then start to kind of draw in a, a few lines as if like they're feathers catching the light. Take my blending stump, clean it off, touch and drag and just try and blend this pigment out a little bit. So it's not so in focus. If you need to, again, come in with your white. Clean it up. This is awful to blend this on this paper. I'm not going to lie. I don't love it. I usually always use grey. Okay, come back in with my Payne's grey, 50%. Same thing, just start to draw the lines in. 
it's a lot of um layering buffing out layering buffing out to get depth of field I'm going to come back in with my um, grayish black oh god now my lawn mower man's just arrived there was the next one neighbor's lawn mower man now my one's just come here <laughs> oh, it's too much guys okay I'm just gonna border the wing again and let's take our black we're gonna start to buff it out a little bit Add some areas that are a bit darker. If we need to, we can take our blackest black. And again, just little circles and just sections of it which is really dark and then sections which is not really dark. This kind of curves in a little bit. And I'm going to grab my blending stump and I'm just going to very, 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 very gently touch and drag on the edge of this wing I'm also just going to come back in with my warm grey so my 704 and right at the bottom of this beak kind of pokes out and then there's a bit of a sharp corner so I just want to kind of replicate that for him and then come back in with my yellowy colours over the top. Okay. Now I'm going to take my white and I'm going to start just bordering the beak again not applying huge amounts of pressure but just outlining the edge of where this white is now we can see in this portion it's quite bright white and then it transitions more into a gray so I'm going to start with my white and just lightly kind of push that pigment in my little circular motions there's not a lot of detail here again because it's like out of focus area so I'm not too worried about drawing um what's the word I'm looking for like I'm not following the the I'm not doing strokes and I'm not really following the line of the third direction or anything like that because we can't see it whereas when we get to this inner portion where the wing kind of pokes out I can start to draw with a little bit more precision so I'm going to come back in with my blending stump I'm going to clean that off and just push the white in push my base in with my blending stump fill that tooth in I'm gonna grab so this little lumpy bit here is like a really bright yellow so I've grabbed out my gold car cadmium cadmium yellow gold cadmium yellow from um Karen Bash and I, I'm actually gonna erase this as much as I can before I lay this pigment in so I'm gonna grab my yeah my dark cadmium gold cadmium yellow and I'm gonna start to just Again, lightly buff in little circles to fill in this area. And we'll add more depth with our oranges and like ready browns. So we can push that pigment in with our blending stump if you need. Okay, let's take a saffron maybe saffron mm. let's actually take the 221 from stabilo and we're going to start to fill in some of these areas where we've got some dark orange 
it's kind of like a wrinkly little brain, this part. So I'm just going to do some lines. And I might come in with my dark carmine and start to draw in with a bit more detail some of these areas. Okay. Um, maybe take my 305, which is my very vibrant orange, and start to just kind of buff that in over the top of those areas where we popped the card, cardium? Oh god, my brain. It's fried. Alright, <clears throat> I'm going to grab a dark brown and just, mm, I don't know if brown was the right choice, but let's go back in with this dark carmine. And you can see I'm just kind of going over and then blending and then going over and blending. Come back in with your bright yellow if you need. Just pop in some details. As I said, it's quite wrinkly, a little bit like a brain. So you can add in some of that information there. And then if you want to, you can get like a lighter yellow and highlight the edge. Okay, I want to take my um, black and I'm going to really, really, really lightly just border the outer edge of that little yellow bit. Touch up with some orange. Okay, let's take our one one two one two three zero, which is like a grey, it's like a warm oral cool grey, is it a cool grey? It's like a cool grey from the Faber-Castell and in this bottom inner portion we're just going to start to fill that in. A little bit and then circular motions very light bring it out now we're going to grab our slate oh actually I'm going to come in with a bit more of a warm color so 175 112 2175 by Faber Castell I'm going to start to just with tiny little strokes, I'm going to pull the pigment out. So I'm going to leave a nice little gap for the white where it meets the beak. And then we're going to start to drag out some of this more brownie gray that we see. And I'm doing little lines. I'm not doing them all in a row. I'm sort of changing my starting point. And then I'm following the curve of the face. So I'm kind of going horizontal. And then as I start to come down to where this curve is, I'm going to start to follow that curve with my little strokes. Just working my way down. Now where the neck kind of ends or the head ends and starts to meet with this black, there is actually about, about a one mil gap where there is more of a um, light gray color. So again, just slowly working my way down. You don't have to be too neat, but being mindful to try and replicate roughly the size of the strokes. We don't want to be doing huge long strokes when the fur is or the feathers are only little. Just here. So I'm going to come back in with that light grey, the 230. Uh, 
just come along this inner bottom border. And then as we get to where the eye is, so where the eye kind of meets with here, the strokes really change to like a little comma. Is comma the right word? Yeah, probably a little comma. So we want to start to replicate that with our pencil. Now we can come back in with our slate gray, so our 181 and start to deepen the values in this little bit here. And you can bring a few little sparse hairs over into your gray, not too many. Remember, it starts to really curve down in this portion. We're going to take our black and right on the border of this. We're going to have some darkness right on the edge. And then it kind of has a little curve, like a little C just here. So we're going to try and implement a little bit of that. We'll take a blending stamp and just blend it out a little bit. Oh gosh, it just, this, honestly, this colour is horrible to work on. I don't think I'll do it again. And I'll just keep working around. We'll come back in with our black and we're just adding a few little bits in there. And I'm going to come back in with my grey, the 230, and start to do some um, hairs in here but I'm sort of doing a little feather and then skipping a big gap so I'm only Im implementing a little bit of them almost like a highlight and we can grab our white and we can do again sort of popping one in having a little gap and then being very sparse um, with how much white we put in not very much at all is what I essentially want Okay. We're going to come back up with our slate grey and we're going to start to buff in a little bit of that grey at the top of his head. So just little circle motions being very thin in this portion because um, there's not actually a lot of dark uh, feathers in there. So just very light. I'm just laying my base, little circles. And then I can get my blending stump and push that into the tooth of the paper. Also, just before, when I said my lawnmower man's here, I think that he's just done a drive-by, so just to check on my lawns, and then he's gone, so that's good. Um, let's take, it's quite blue, isn't it, in this upper portion, so we're going to take a little bit of the Payne's Grey 50%, and I just want to, in little strokes, kind of follow up, and then over the head. We're going to grab our warm grey, so the 704, and we're going to start to, again, from the where the beak starts, just really light circular motions, buff that outwards and remember this middle portion that I talked about is a lot lighter so it's just like a, a little circle or like a, a very weird half oval shape of where his fluff is the sun's kind of hitting him I think or it's like transitioning in from white 
So we're going to take our white pencil and we're just going to start to, around the edge of this nose here, there's like almost like a little sunshine rays coming off of little feathers. So we're just going to start to implement that. So I put a little bit in, I skip a little gap, I put a little bit in and I'm working around with the shape of the nose, but keeping that almost, making sure that I'm, I'm still doing like a, a little arching motion almost with my pencil as I work around the edge and then getting much smaller around the edges because again we want to make sure that we're um, replicating the appearance of or like so we can see the shape of the head and that's so that we can see depth of field um, and more of a 3D appearance. So I'm going to come back in with this um, actually I'm going to come back in with the 122175, so like a brownie kind of gray from um, Faber Castell. And I'm going to start to add in some strokes. Again, following that, like almost like sunshine, ray of sunshine bursts, if that makes sense. And I'm just doing some and then skipping a gap and you notice with his fluff that it almost kind of um there's almost like sections of it so it's kind of like there's almost like lines like in a tree if that makes sense like if you cut a tree open you can see the rings it's kind of like that with his fur when you look at it nice and close and I am going to take my black now and I'm going to start to on this outer edge. So right along the border, it's a bit deeper and it kind of works its way in a little bit, not all the way. So I'm kind of, again, redefining these little rings that I talked about. And then on the edge, it's heavier and thicker black or like it's more, there's more depth and value in there, that area. And then it gets, especially up over the eye, it gets quite black and dark. So keeping my pencil strokes not too long. Oh, I'm getting a cramp in my hand. And then we can come up at this eye on the top of his brow and just on the border, it's a little bit black. And then just add some sparse little black hairs in between. All right, guys, so I'm coming back in with the 230. And then I'm going to start to just add in those little strokes up through this, um, do you call it the crown? I don't know what this part is called, um, but through this area. Again, not, not too um, dense, just adding in so you can kind of see where the fluff transitions. And remember if you apply a little bit more pressure, you can get a bit more of a highlight with your pigment. So every now and then you can kind of add a little bit more depth and highlight to that area. Just keep coming back and forth with our blacks and our greys and then redefining the depth. Unfortunately, this is what happens with pastels when we apply a pigment, it, it alters it a little bit. So we do have to kind of keep transitioning back and forth um, between them. I'm just adding a little bit of darkness between these white highlights that I put in. So I can start to I'm taking the 175 at the moment and I'm just going to start to buff in a bit more pigment now. And then I'm going to come back in with my blending stump and just push that in. Oh, it's a clump of hair. Okay. 
you want, just gonna border his little head a little bit. I know that didn't go so well last time, so we'll see. Might work with a little bit of this grey. Oh yeah. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of my warm grey and I'm just going along and, and bordering where his um, head meets the background. Just to, again, redefine that um, before we before we lay down all the feathers. I've just taken that lighter gray, the uh, 230, and I again, I'm just going around and watering his little head and then dragging the pigment up a little bit because I can buff it out. a little bit cross-eyed after a while sometimes when I'm drawing. Um, I don't know if it's the lighting or, or what the go is but again with my stupid finger. Okay so I've touched up his little background so he's starting to kind of pop up a little bit which is good. Um, we want that. We want a little bit of Okay, coming back to my reference photo, we're going to take a little bit more of our slate grey, so our 181, and just start to draw in little feathers. So I'm just following the curve of his head. Um, I'm going to be very gentle around, again, where his border is, where his head meets the backdrop, backdrop because I don't want to ruin it. So. And I'm just making sure I'm following the feather direction. As I work along. So we've kind of mixed um, warm greys and cool greys. And then we'll have some blacks and some light greys kind of transitioning through there as well. So I'm going to switch up and grab my black and I'm going to start to deepen these edges where it's definitely very dark for him. And you can see I'm kind of like cutting in on an angle because if we look at the reference photo up close, that's what his little feathers are doing. And then up at the top of his head, it gets quite dark in the middle. So again, I'm just doing the same thing, back and forth little strokes. I wanna replicate his little dark patch. And then it kind of starts to merge and blend down towards this back end. And now I can just do some sporadic little black or dark feathers through this area remembering he's got those like ring like loops over the top of his head I'm trying to be consistent with that as I draw and now we can come in with our I might come in with our warm grey. I don't want to go too light yet. And again, I'm just going to start to really gently 
pop in some of his little light feathers where the where the um, sun's hitting them. So just little strokes and then working out in like my again my sunshine kind of like ray of sunshine if that makes sense or like a, like a fanning motion. And as I work down, I, I can be a little bit lighter on this inner portion, but I want to stay away from this outer section because he's actually very dark in there. I'm going to take my blackest black from Creta Color and I'm going to start to go in and define these um, black areas and make them really pop. So just deepening these values. I'm re really going over these where I kind of put his dark patches just before. And I might come in with my blue and again just do a similar sort of thing around the edge of his head because it is definitely a more blue colour up and around there. So you could use any kind of dark blue. I just quite like these greys because he's it, it, it goes in line a little bit with the gray that he's already got and I think it contrasts nice with the background. Okay before I get to this back end I'm going to start to put in a little bit of the lighter colors through here. So let's go in with we'll lay like a light base so we'll come in with our um, 230 and we're just going to really really lightly um, start to kind of do some circular motions and fill in this area of his face where he um, has the lighter bluff. But again, I'm, I'm not too worried about following or creating strokes. I just want to give him a base colour. The paper feels damaged here. I feel like it's hard to lay pigment. It's not ideal. Being really careful as I get around to the areas that are detailed. I don't want to muck up what I've already popped down. So. Okay. Now that's in there. Get a nice clean blending stump. Make sure it's cleaned off because we're using a light pigment. And we're just going to push that into the tooth and see what happens when I don't pay attention. I smudge black into white. We don't want to do that or black into the light colour. I should say it's not white. Oh, I did it again. Try do this with a bit more care than me. <laughs> okay. So we've laid a bit of a base colour. Now we can take it again and start to work in some details. So I'm just doing little strokes and following the shape of the face. So on this upper portion, it kind of goes uh, like a little scoop up so it's kind of angling up and then from about here down we start to like go down and curve around the bones in the face so you've got to be mindful to try and replicate that as you draw. I'm going to come in with some white actually I'm going to come in with some warm grey and I'm going to start to put in some of these little details, very little strokes. And I'm just trying to follow the shape of the face that I just talked about right here where the eye kind of meets in. He's got a little bit of a bone structure where it sinks in. So we're just going to um, try and replicate. That's kind of like his occipital bone. And it comes in. So I've darken that little gap there and now I'm just doing little sparse feathers to get some depth and then it's a bit darker around this edge here where it meets this little brain <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it I'm going to call it a little brain it's probably his lip 
his little lip where his mouth opens. Start working down. And then under his eye gets quite light. I want to really try and erase this line here. I'm just going to wash my hands, guys. Just give me a second. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry, I actually hate having dirty hands. It stresses me out, which is part of why I don't ever usually, as I said, use my fingers to blend. Uh, I don't know why that's become my thing today. So I'm going to take my whites, and then I'm going to start to add in some of these hairs here. So just doing my little strokes. Um, following the direction of the fur. Start to come up and over this little brow bone. And it all comes down. And we can cross over into this beak a little bit because he's almost got the feathers growing out those little follicles that I talked about earlier. So I'm going to try and replicate that. And just slowly working my way around. It's very unexciting. Now, as we get to the corner of the eye, it really does pop with a lot of highlights. So I'm going to take care to try and border that nice and bright. And I'm again, I'm changing the direction of my fur as I work. So it kind of is almost coming up in like a fanning motion. And I want to follow along with what I actually see the bone structure doing in the direction of the feathers. And then it kind of gets a bit sparse there and then through here I just do a few little bits of white but I don't want to cover up I don't want to like I want to still be able to definitively see that there's like a darker part where his eyes a bit sunken in if you need to we can take um another color like a deeper gray and just add it in a little bit this is, I can never read this, I think it's a 726 by Stabilo, so it's like a blue-based grey. Um, we uh, can add that in a little bit. Just remember to pop some sporadic ones through so it kind of blends in a little bit and then it doesn't look like we've just used a random colour somewhere else. So we want stuff to be cohesive as we work. So coming back in with my white and then I can see under here under the eye it really starts to brighten up so I'm gonna try and follow the bone structure so it goes a bit like this it's like kind of like a swoop and then around swoop with a little downward flick following the, the little puff for the puffin The other thing to remember when you're picking your paper color, and this is a good example why, is that it's always going to kind of poke through a little bit so you can still kind of see a little bit of the orange. Um, this is part of why a lot of people, especially with like painting, um, they do like a base color first. Um, one, it helps with your values and um, understanding like the colors correctly or seeing the colors correctly. But it also kind of, because um, it's always going to kind of poke through a little bit. So you usually want to pick a complementary colour. <laughs> I did not do that today. Uh, 
The best colour I have found is the dark grey. That's my main colour that I work on that you'll see 90% of my work done on. Um, but as I said, I just wanted to use this paper because I have it sitting around. I don't ever use this colour. I figured I may as well. Okay. If you need to come back in with a lighter grey but nothing, not, not one that's too dark, just to try and fill in some of these gaps. And going along that hairline. I um I actually decided, part of the reason I decided to draw the puffin was just because I was like, it's so weird. It's such a weird bird. Um, I've not really seen, I've never seen a puffin in real life. It's actually that I started following a photographer recently and he, he had some photos of puffins. I was like, oh my God, what is this little bird? Um, and then I found some royalty free photos that I could use um, and I thought this it's fun this is fun this should be a fun little guy to draw I didn't think he would be too hard but he is probably a little bit more complex than I anticipated however isn't that always the way so I'm going to take my black now and I'm starting to just fill in a bit more of this little head part Again, secular motions, I'm not too worried about the direction of the feathers because we're going to blend our base layer in with the blending stump. Just fill in that tooth. Come back in again. And I'm going to take my blackest black and I'm going to start to add in the detail with the, my blackest black. So it's very black around the, like the scoop of this little C curve here. So I'm just going to implement that and then I'm going to do dashes and leave sections and then always again along this border of where the black meets the white. It's quite dark and I can come back in with my, I might come in with a bit of the blue, like the paint or the grayish black, something like that. And just start to do a few little very, very light dashes in between. If you want to take your blending stump, put it on like a 45 degree angle or as horizontal as you can and just really lightly touch and drag that pigment down. Come back in with your blackest black and again just touch up some of these areas that you need to. I'm always making mistakes, so I just go in and fix those up. Sometimes I just take away a little bit too much or put a little bit too much in somewhere and I need to just touch it up. Okay. Let's lay down a really, 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 really small thin layer of the 175, really thin, just around here, around his eye. 
so that this because there's quite a lot of shadow here so I'm just going to very gently buff that in and it kind of comes up and over the eye so again I'm going to very very lightly sort of implement that I'm going to take my blending stump and just push that pigment in so he's got a bit of a base to work from cool okay I'm gonna take my white and right at the edge of the eye I'm gonna start to work my way out more in a horizontal manner and then as I get down we start to um, change our direction down and follow the eye lid or the waterline or whatever you want to call this little thing on his eye. I'm going to come up and over and right on the hairline I'm just gonna do little strokes of white Now we're going to switch back to this 230, so this like lighter grey colour that we had. And then we want to start to follow the bone structure of the face, so it kind of arches up and over and then comes down and more horizontal again. So right around the eye it kind of does this little slide and then we become more horizontal. So that's what we're looking to implement as we work along here. Up the top, it's more of a horizontal plane. And you can see again, I'm never really starting the, the feathers from the same spot. Like I don't draw in a line, I, I change my start direction all the time. Just like human hair, like we don't have, our hair follicles aren't in lines, right? They're like, everywhere I'm going to scoop up a little bit on this little black line because we see his feathers kind of scoop up and then they meet back in the middle so they come back into like a V almost And now I'm going to grab my weight and I'm going to start to pop in some little highlights through that feather. Not too many. If you want to, you can take like your slate gray or maybe, maybe not, maybe not quite that dark. We might take something like the 726 if I can find it. Uh, where is it gone? I can't. I just hold all my pencils in my hand and now I can't find, there it is. Oh. No, I, I, I tell a lie, we're going to go back to the slate grey. And I'm just going to, a few little, every now and then, pop in some dark spots where you can see as if like the feather is gapped all the way down to the skin and there's a little bit of a shadow. So not everywhere, just, you, you know, being sparse with it. And then you can come back in with your white if you need. And re glue it. See, because we laid that base, very muddy grey base colour first, even though we're going over the top with white, it's still not coming up like super bright white pigment relative to, you know, these areas. It looks darker. 
Now I'm going to come in with our 726 and just sort of deepen some of these shadows. Yeah. And then it's darker on this edge, this bottom edge. Again, just keep coming back and forth with your switching between your pigments and working out where you need to make something a bit brighter or where you need to deepen your values a little bit because it constantly changes and the more we work on stuff that like it will keep happening like the more pigment we lay um, the more you need to kind of keep readjusting what you've already applied sometimes something can look really dark and then once you've laid the surrounding colors you're like oh actually it's not that bright anymore. All right, let's take our 175 again, and it's a similar scenario, really thinly, just buff in along this edge. Super, super thin, not much at all. His little cheek. Add in some sporadic little furries there if you need. Take your blending stamp and buff it out. Okay, I'm going to come back in with my white. And I'm just going to start to rework on this under eye section, which is very bright white. And then this inner eye bit that we talked about. So it scoops under and then down. and then comes up and goes horizontal along the border of his little eye. I'm going to take my 230 and I'm going to start to, again, just lay a light base. So I'm going over some of this darker pigment that we've just done. Again, take my clean blending stamp and just blend in that light colour into the tooth, give myself a good base. Oh, I want to erase these lines as much as possible. Even this little one. Okay. Actually, guys, I'm gonna, I'm jumping around. I'm jumping around. I know, but I'm gonna grab a black pan pastel which the good question is, is where have I put the black pan pastel? I definitely had one. I must have dropped it. This is not ideal, just a second. All right, I found it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my black pan pastel and I am going to start to um, fill in his little chest area. So just dipped in my pigment. I'm gonna zoom out on my reference photo a little bit. Dipped in my pigment in my black. And I'm just starting to go along, being really careful around this um, part where his neck meets because I can just do that with a pencil with more precision. I just wanna lay my base. I 
I work my way around. It's very black around here. So again, just being really careful. Get a lot of fallout sometimes. Remember, if you don't have pen pastels, just use your pencils. It's cool. I'm just doing this because it's quicker. So I've laid my base. I might grab a little bit of a light gray and actually take. So this is the raw umber tint and just start to kind of um, implement that in his cheek just so that I, again, don't have to use as much pigment. So I'm still trying to follow the feather direction. And around this little bit here. You'll notice I've left this gap and that's because <clears throat> that's where he's got much brighter pigment. So, okay. <clears throat> Let's take our warm dark gray. So the 175. I'm gonna start to slowly add in these darker shadows, it really curves around here. It's like a really quite a sharp comma or bracket, like a typing bracket. And then we work our way up. And under this section of the eye. It's funny how sometimes pictures that you think aren't very detailed actually turn out to be pretty detailed and you also think that they will be very easy but they don't necessarily actually feel that easy. <laughs> okay, and just keep working around, just remembering to be really cautious and follow that direction of the, I keep trying to say fur because that's what I usually draw, but the feathers. Puffins have quite weird feathers. They like almost look like singular, like they don't, you know how a normal feather kind of has a stem and then has branches coming off? Like when you're looking at the puffins in this picture, it doesn't really look like that. It's kind of, um, yeah, they just look like more like little single, single little strands. And we're going to grab our slate grey, and because it's a bit more of a cool grey, and we're going to start to implement that around this upper border, and then scooping. It's a very weird shape. I need to zoom in on my reference photo because I can't see properly. Okay, so it needs to kind of go like little half scoops going up this way. And then it kind of scoops down. So it scoops up and then kind of around and down as it meets into this lighter section. Yeah. It's much more of a dense shadow in this little section just here. So I'm being a bit heavier with my pigment application. Remembering that little curve that gets very sharp around this portion.
Okay, I'm going to take my 230 and start to just add in some more strokes through here. Just working quickly because it's so light and against the other light fur, I'm not too worried about being like super precise because you can't see it that much because of all the base colours that I've laid. And then we're going to grab some white and just start to pop in some little highlights throughout that more shadowed area. This is where you need to have more precision because they pop out so you need to kind of make them look realistic. Some terrible hand cramps today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm just too far away from the desk, maybe. Mm, a few little sporadic ones in there. We're gonna take our black, we're just gonna fix up this little part where there's a groove of black. And then we might take a little bit of the Payne's Grey 50% and just at the bottom of that black line, I'm just gonna run this along the edge. And then a few little strokes under his eye and then come back in with the black. Just under his eye. And then if you need to just go around and pop in a few lines where the fur meets, the feathers meet the eyelid, remember? So just to deepen that a little bit, give it a bit more depth. And then you can, if you want, grab your blackest black and then just again deepen a couple of these spots. I don't do the whole thing, I kind of do like a little section and then skip a section. Touch up where you need, as always. And I might grab my blending stump really lightly. Just go over that part and then get my light grey again. And touch it up. It kind of comes into a little peak, doesn't it? Just looking at the reference photo, it kind of starts to do that and then maybe a little bit more around here. So with the, when I'm drawing, I, I, I try to replicate an image but also put my own spin on it. So it's never identical. I always make things a little bit different. Um, I think they call that creative license. <laughs> but yeah, I never want my work to be like, well, it's not that I never want my work, but I, you know, it's enjoyable to me to have some slight, um, some slight, what's the word I want to use? Uh, just like of my own touches, really. Like, 
yeah, it's nice to have my own spin on things sometimes. I'm just touching up the bottom of this beak because it's a bit funny. Okay. Now, I'm going to fill in some of this black. Because I want to start to um, do this neckline and because the white comes over the top of the black I need to apply the black first so that at least on the border so that when the fur pokes through it looks like the white is on top and not underneath the black. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that the layering is right. So I'm going to take my pencil here just because I can have a bit more precision. And then if you want to, you can just do some little drags up into the white. Or where the grey, the light grey would be. So we've popped that in there. I've dropped a pencil as usual. I don't know where it is. I've found my pencil, so we're going to come back in with our 230. Um, we are just going to start to um, pop this little neck part in that's much lighter. So I'm just following along and trying to replicate that um, feather direction. So I'm doing a C curve and then it's slowly transitioning like this, like again, like a fanning motion up as I work. And then as we get up to this upper part, it kind of transitions more to an upward curve. So before we're doing a curve like this, and then as we work our way up, it kind of becomes more horizontal and then comes up and over like a wave almost. So I know we're pulling at the moment, I'm dragging a lot of dirty dark pigment into this area, but we'll touch that up with the white. So I'm going to grab our white colour and start to draw in some little highlights on that little part of his neck where it kind of blends across. And up and over. So don't stress, we'll go through and touch up these little areas. Oh, I just can't get my reference photo right. I just keep moving it. Now I'm like blocking stuff off. Okay. I'm going to take a blending stump. I've got my really old trashy one at the moment, and I'm just going to kind of blend out that little. It's almost his cheek, really, of where it transitions, and then that's the area that's catching the light, specifically down here. We can come back in with a bit more of our like slate color. Just here, again, we talked about it being really dark. Just there. And then it kind of follows a fanning pattern just along the edge and then starts to flick up a little bit. might grab my blackest black and just start to pop in a little bit more depth just here. Mm. 
And then I can grab my clean blending stump and just gently touch and drag that out and blend it out just a little bit better. He's looking quite painterly, is, the, is what I'd like to say. Um, so I might stop him here and then we'll do a part two to the tutorial. Otherwise the video is going to be too long. It's already two hours and 45 minutes. So we'll stop here. Join me for part two um, and then we will work on the rest of him. So thanks for watching so far. Um, don't again, please, if you haven't already, um, I'd really love your support. If you could like, follow, comment, share all that jazz. Um, it really will help me people who, um, want to support my page that, or, or do support my page through all those manners as well as signing up to my Patreon. You are the reason that I can do this and why it's possible for me to do this. So I really, really appreciate it. And, um, yeah. I will see you guys in the next half.